Well, hi, I'm Aaron. This is from my home front porch in Largo, Florida. And the reason I'm going to hit on a few stuff, a little bit of some stuff here on my video is I've been going through some stuff in early that is um changing me. But not it's not really a change, it's more of a it is a change, but it's more of a transformation than it is a change. And I think there's a big difference between a change and a transformation because I mean you can change a tire in a car but it won't transform it. But at the same time you can transform your car by doing a whole bunch of stuff to it and it will never look the same again. You can transform it in a good way and a bad way. You can transform it by getting in a wreck <laughs> and totally destroying it and you can transform it by putting on new rims, decking out the engine, fixing up the inside, putting you know a whole bunch of cool shit on it, maybe even repainting it, put a cool stereo system in it. And so there there's a difference between transformation and change. You change the tires, but you transform it. You transform your life, if you would so desire. Now, one of my main main uh, struggles over the last, ever since I've been around, really, has been to figure out what is holding me back from accomplishing everything I want to do in my life, and. Quite blatantly, I have a lot of goals. I have a lot of dreams. There's a lot of things I want to accomplish. And it seems so unreasonable, maybe unreal. And honestly, I've been probably spending a lot of time reading, listening to audios, trying to get into the mindset, trying doing all the stuff that I've learned over the years, that I've studied over the years, trying to emulate other people. And I came to realization that it wasn't really about how much I was trying to acquire in knowledge. That I, I didn't need to learn more to be successful. But I had to get rid of some of the crap in my head. And that some of the stuff that was ingrained inside of me, I had to get rid of that. And by doing so, make way to ingrain other things in me that are better for me that are going to give me more success, stability, and help me accomplish my purpose and goals in life over the next year, 10, 15, and beyond. But one thing I want to hit on real quick, and I'll keep this short because you can go into depth by reading my blog post, is one of the major limiting beliefs. I grew up in a very Christian environment, but at the same time, it wasn't as Christian as you think it would be. Because even though people were preaching the Bible, and even though people were t trying to teach you what Jesus taught and all that stuff, which is great, they missed a main point, and that is that they were still using fear. They still were u interpreting biblical principles based on a limited belief, based on a limited amount of wealth, limited amount of faith, limited amount of everything. And so that's still reflected in their biblical teachings and their teachings on how to live life and their visions and their goals, which some of them, I don't even know if they have any, to be honest, but they were telling me how not to accomplish mine. But honestly, one of the main points, one of the main things that I found, and this is kind of really funny, and I'll get to that in a minute, what one of my main points was, but um, <laughs> I, uh, just just over the last six months, there's been this training material that I've wanted so badly that I've been trying to come up with ways to get it, and I finally have access to it, and I'm so excited about going through the Empower Network training, especially the Master's Course and the 15K Formula, but that's not even the reason I'm shooting this video. The reason I'm shooting this video is because I was reading a book and it was just giving me this just reading this book was putting me in a position where I had to look at myself and realize that there was stuff that I had to get rid of there was stuff 
that I had to change before I could put anything else in my brain and make anything else work. And our subconscious mind is geared. The whole purpose of our subconscious mind is to help help us to survive. That's the only job. And so if it doesn't matter how much you try to accomplish something, if in your bottom of your beliefs, you believe that what you're doing is going to cause destruction or damnation to you, yourself, your subconscious mind is going to sabotage you the whole way. So the only way to change that is by changing that what's what, changing that part and so this evening this is really crazy because I've been wanting to watch these videos and take these courses for months I mean I've been like doing jobs trying to do other trying to sell stuff just trying to get my hands on this product because I truly believe that would change my life if I did and tonight this is the first night I really have access to all of it and I couldn't get on every time I tried to log in I would get server error server error server error and I was so frustrated I was like almost going into convulsions because I'm wanting this so bad because I'm so sick and tired of just coming up short every time I'm so sick and tired of accomplishing something to a certain point and then dropping off to back to a level of zero you know, what I was conditioned, conditioned, I grew up with, you know, monetarily wise, zero. So that's what I was conditioned. So every time I would almost reach something, it would just collapse. I mean, bring me right back to the point where, that what I was used to. And I was, and so I was forced to go back to this book that I'm reading, and I was forced to take a good look at where this programming comes from. What is making me believe that it is so terrible? To accomplish my financial goals and dreams to do the things I want to do on this earth before I die I'm not gonna discuss afterlife because that is a personal belief that you have to work out for yourself but my goal was I mean why am I gonna worry about the afterlife if I can't don't even have a good plan for right now you know that's like I mean that's like a kid a dad giving his kid ten dollars and then the kid don't know what to do with it, so he throws it in a trash can. Is the dad going to go give him another hundred? No, exactly. So you have to, the, the child has to understand and has to have some kind of intent of what to do with it, and then his father might approve of that or not. But if he does approve of it, he's more likely to give him more money. So, anyways, this is a lot about money, but that's also one of my biggest setbacks in life has always been why I have not been able to crack the code, you know? Why could I not crack the code? And the reason is, because I, I remember, how I don't know how many times at church it was preached that it's easier for a rich man, no, excuse me, it's easier for a camel to go through the needle ear than for a rich man to get to heaven. And it was always put in a way to where it was impossible for this rich man to go to heaven. But people do not understand, or even if they did at the same time, they did not realize that it was not impossible for the camel to go through the needle ear. It was impossible for a camel that was carrying a whole bunch of stuff to go through the needle ear. So what the, ca what, what the camel driver had to do was take everything off the camel, move the camel through the gate, and on the other side, repack the camel and continue his journey through Jerusalem. All right away from Jerusalem, whatever it may be. Now, the needle ear was also kind of a shortcut. So, it was easier for a camel to take the shortcut than for a rich man to go to heaven. Now, and then so, it's in connection with the, par with, with the conversation Jesus had with the young merchant who, when Jesus told him to give all his stuff away and follow him, yes, the young man hesitated, hesitated and turned away. And the reason that Jesus was sad and felt sorrow for him was the fact that this young man did not have the faith. He did not have enough faith to know he can let it go. He did it once, he can do it again. He didn't have that faith to understand that every time God has asked somebody to let go of something, 
to go through the needle ear on the other side. God repacks the camel more than you can imagine. And so the reason I'm shooting this short video is because I know there's other people out there just like me that believe that if you become financially successful, you will not make it to heaven because it's a sin or... But I think the main key is fear. It's fear. Okay? So anytime fear guides you, you are not walking in the path of God and you're not following the biblical scriptures. If you walk in fear, you're not living by biblical scriptures. That goes for money, that goes for faith in your spiritual life, that goes for anything. If it is geared by faith, it is not geared by God. I mean, <laughs> other way around, if it's geared by faith, it's by, it serves God's purpose. But if it's geared by fear, it does not serve His purpose. So, this was my, one of my major breakthroughs, and I'm going to go into it a little bit on my blog post, so do read it if you're interested on this, and I'm going to go into some details, pull up some scripture verses. But I want, at the, at the, let me put in one more thing. And you can, I'm going to put the verses in the blog so you can go back and relook at it and think about it for yourself a little bit, and maybe, maybe this will help you. But Jesus talks about the, par the parable of the talents. Okay, and we all know, and if you don't, you can read it up. I'll put the verse in the blog post. The guy that got ten talents went out and got ten more. And the king came back from his journey and was like, You good servant, you did well. I'm going to set you, make you ruler over many cities. Now, the guy, that, the servant that was given five talents went out and got five more and came back. And the king, when the king returned from his journey, he was like, you good servant, I'm going to set you over many cities because you, you took well care of my stuff. Now, the king had given another one, another one of his servants, one talent. Only one. And it is easy to see through the previous two examples that no, he, the king never expected the guy who got one talent to produce more than one. He didn't expect, he didn't expect Expect the guy that got one talent to produce to produce five, ten, twenty. No, no. All he was supposed to do was do something with it. But the the third servant, the one that got one talent, said, and I'm paraphrasing here. He said, "I know that my king is a harsh, unreasonable, and cruel person. Therefore, I'm going to bury it in my backyard." And just leave it there until he comes back so I don't lose anything because he's not going to understand me. And he had a limiting, limited belief. And, that, and, the, and when the king came back and asked him where, what, what he did with his talents. And the servant said, I knew you were a hard king and I didn't want to mess with it. So I just buried it in the backyard. And the king was like, well... If you'd have put it in the bank, at least you've got an interest out in all of it. And then he says something very interesting. He says, "Go to where there is gnashing of teeth, and darkness and sorrow." So, not stepping into your purpose because you're being guided by fear and limited beliefs might just be the true reason for going to the lake of fire. Lake of fire and brimstone where there's a gnashing of teeth. That is something you really need to think about because how many of us are not living our purpose because we are afraid of something? How many times are we not taking action because we're afraid of something? So, I hope I was able to contrast a little bit of, the, of a different philosophy and a different viewpoint of what maybe Jesus was really trying to bring across to his disciples and to the the multitudes at the time, and maybe it's just a little different than what we're taught sometimes. So, in closing, do check out the blog because I, I'm going to go into a little bit more details. Thank you for watching. 
share it, like it, or leave me some feedback. And God bless you.